Hello, and welcome to my choir loft office at St. Gabriel the Archangel for this session on the liturgical year of the traditional Latin Mass compared to the liturgical year of the Novus Ordo, or I should say the liturgical calendar of the traditional Latin Mass, or the TLM as it is called. Let's begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So I'm a bit of a liturgical geek, but I find this topic rather fascinating. Um, did a lot of research, and this is going to be part one of two parts. Um, today I'd like to talk about the ranking of feast days in the TLM. So in the traditional Latin Mass, there's ranking of feast days as there is in the Novus Ordo. Um, we have first class feast, second class feasts, third class feast, and fourth class feast. In the Novus Ordo, of course, we have solemnities, feast days, memorials, two types of memori memorials, obligatory memorials and non-obligatory memorials, optional memorials, and we have burial days. And there's similarities between this ranking and the ranking in the TLM. Because of course the Novus Ordo came directly from the TLM. And so there's many similarities between the liturgical calendars of both. All the major feasts are the same, the days are the same, the seasons are the same, but there are also many differences. So first class feasts are very similar to solemnities. Not completely like a solemnity, but very similar. So first class feasts include the important, most important feast of the church year, of course. So that would include Christmas, Easter, Ascension, Pentecost, um, Assumption of Mary, All Saints Day, um, January 1st, at the end of the octave of Christmas, it would include, um, the, let's see, it would include the Solemnity of St. Joseph or St. Joseph's Spouse of Mary on March 19th. It would include the Annunci Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary on March 25th. It would include uh, the Solemnity of St. Peter and St. Paul on June 29th. It would include the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which I mentioned on August 15th. Um, all of these are solemnities in the Novus Ordo on the same days as they are in the TLM in which they are recognized as first class feasts. Now in the Novus Ordo, Sundays are considered solemnities. Every Sunday, unless it's during the penitential season of Advent or Lent, we sing the Gloria, we hear a second reading, and we recite the Creed, all characteristics of a solemnity. Um, obviously, some Sundays are more solemn than others. So uh, Easter Sunday, of course, Easter Vigil is the mother of all vigils, the highest ranking solemnity of all solemnities of the entire church year or the, or the entire liturgical calendar. Um, Easter Sunday, the, also the highest ranking solemnity. And uh, that obviously is more solemn than a Sunday during Lent or a Sunday during ordinary time. The second highest ranking solemnity in the church year is Christmas. And the third highest ranking solemnity in the church year is Pentecost. So again, a Sunday during Advent or Lent would not be as solemn as those days, um, but yet a Sunday during Advent and Lent would be more solemn than Sundays during ordinary time. So there is a hierarchy there in the Novus Ordo. In the TLM, there is a hierarchy as well. Some Sundays are classified as first class Sundays, and some Sundays are classified as second class I'm sorry, first class feast, and some Sundays are classified as second class feast. So the Sundays of Advent and Lent 
are all second, our first class fees, I'm sorry, getting confused here. All the Sundays at Advent and Lent are first class feasts. Um, the Epiphany of Our Lord is a, a first class feast and in the TLM it's celebrated on January 6th, whereas in the Novus Ordo it's celebrated as a solemnity on Sunday. Um, Ash Wednesday is considered a first class feast. It's very, very interesting because in the Novus Ordo, it's not ranked, but it's recognized as a unique day in the liturgical year beginning the season of Lent. I will say that we get more Catholics at Ash Wednesday Mass than we do Holy Days of Obligation, which is very interesting since Ash Wednesday is ranked as a first class feast in the TLM. Um, in the TLM, Passion Sunday is different than Palm Sunday. It precedes Palm Sunday. In the Novus Ordo, we celebrate those both those events on one day. In the TLM, both of these days are considered, these Sundays are considered first class feasts. Every day of Holy Week is considered a first class feast. Even Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of Holy Week are considered first class feasts. And of course, Holy Thursday and Good Friday and Easter Vigil are all considered first class feasts. In the Novus Ordo, Holy Thursday and Good Friday are considered very sacred holy days as part of the sacred triduum um, and recognized as thus as such, but they do not necessarily receive a ranking, but they are um, considered high, high holy days because they are part of the sacred triduum, the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, uh, let's see, the octave of Easter is, they're all, every day of the octave of Easter is considered a first class feast. And in the Novus Ordo, every day of the octave of Easter is considered a solemnity. Ending with Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, um, the end of the octave, and in the TLM, Divine Mercy Sunday is the end of the octave and also a first class feast. The Ascension falls on Thursday in the TLM as considered a first class feast. But in the Novus Ordo, in most dioceses, Ascension has bumped the seventh Sunday of Easter to Ascension on the Sunday and is considered a solemnity. Of course, the Vigil of Pentecost and Pentecost are first class feasts in the TLM and in the Novus Ordo, they are solemnities. Interestingly enough, in the TLM, there's an octave of Pentecost as well as an octave of Christmas and octave of Easter. And every day of that octave is considered a first class feast. In the Novus Ordo, we do not have an octave of Pentecost. We are right back to ordinary time on, on that Monday after Pentecost. And then the next Sunday is Trinity Sunday. And Trinity Sunday falls on the same day in the TLM. And Corpus Christi in the TLM is, is on the following, Sunday, following Thursday. Now, it does not fall on a Sunday, it falls on a Thursday, and it's considered a first-class feast. In the Novus Ordo, it's the following Sunday and is considered a solemnity. The most sacred heart of Jesus in the TLM is on the Friday following Corpus Christi and is a first-class feast. And in the Novus Ordo, it's the Friday following Corpus Christi and is a solemnity. So here are some differences that are rather interesting. In the TLM, St. Joseph the Workman is celebrated on May 1st as a first class feast. And in the Novus Ordo, the title was changed to St. Joseph the Worker, and it's a memorial rather than a solemnity. So it dropped a couple rankings. The Nativity of St. John the Baptist is on June 24th as a first class feast in the TLM. And the day before is considered a second class feast, the Vigil Mass. 
is considered a second class feast in the TLM. And that day is considered a solemnity in the Novus Ordo. Um, I found this very curious, I did not know this, but on September 29th in the TLM, the dedication of the Basilica of St. Michael is celebrated as a first class feast. On that same day in the Novus Ordo, that has been changed to the Solemnity of the Archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael as a solemnity. So we added the two other archangels on that same day. Um, of course, All Saints Day is a first class feast in the TLM and a solemnity in and holy day of obligation in the Novus Ordo. Um, a solemnity that's been added to the liturgical year in the 20th century was the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ, which occurs on the last Sunday in October in the traditional Latin Mass. And that day is celebrated at the end of the liturgical year, the final day of the liturgical year, the 34th Sunday in ordinary time. Um, our Lord and Savior, King of the Universe, uh, in the in the Novus Ordo Mass. A funeral mass, a requiem mass, is classified as a first class, a first class feast. Um, now the funeral mass has its own propers unique to itself. There are several added propers. It's a very, very beautiful um, solemn mass. If you've never uh, experienced a requiem mass, it's really a beautiful, beautiful part of our tradition that you really want to experience. That's a first class feast as well. Of course, there's no Gloria or Creed, so it's unique unto itself as well. And in the Novus Ordo, um, it's Mass of Christian burial, so it's 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 different and it's not classified at all. It's just recognized as Mass of Christian burial in the Novus Ordo. The feast of the patron saint of a parish or diocese is recognized as a first class feast in the TLM. And in the Novus Ordo, um, for example, in St. Louis, we celebrate the solemnity of St. Louis in the city of St. Louis for the archdiocese. And then if one lives outside of the city in the archdiocese of St. Louis, it is celebrated as a feast. So that's another area where it's a little bit different than the TLM. Okay, moving on to second class feasts. I'm only going to talk about the ranking of feast days today and I'll continue with the rest on another day. So second class feasts are very similar to the ranking of feast in the Norvis Ardo. And that would be days like the octave of Christmas. Um, every day of the octave of Christmas is considered a second class feast. And in the Novus Ordo, every day of the octave is considered a feast day, with the exception of the final day, January 1st, which is a solemnity, Mary Mother of God. And that day in the TLM is also a first class feast, not a second class feast, as the final day of the octave of Christmas. Holy Family Sunday in the TLM is after the Epiphany, and it is a first class feast. In the Novus Ordo, it's um, Holy Family Sunday is the Sunday right after Christmas and is celebrated as a feast day. The Baptism of the Lord in the TLM is a first class feast, I'm sorry, a second class feast. And in the Novus Ordo, it is a feast day as well. Now, in the Novus Ordo, we have a different um, numbering of Sundays. When we are in ordinary time, we're celebrating a Sunday in ordinary time, the second Sunday in ordinary time, the third Sunday in ordinary time, on up to the 34th Sunday in ordinary time. Ordinary meaning ordered, not meaning um, normal, but just meaning ordered outside of a season, a particular season. In the TLM, Sundays are numbered after the Epiphany up until Lent. And actually, the final three Sundays before Lent have their own title, and they're not numbered as Sundays after the Epiphany. So the third Sunday before Lent is called Septuagesima Sunday, 
and it marks the preparations for Lent. The colors change. Actually, the colors are already purple on that day. And some people begin their fasting and abstinence on that day. So they actually have uh, quite a longer Lent. The next Sunday, the second Sunday before Lent is called Sexagema Sunday. And the final Sunday before Lent is called Quinquagesima Sunday. So the Sundays um, after Easter are also second class feast and they're numbered second Sunday after Easter, third Sunday after Easter, fourth Sunday after Easter, and fifth Sunday after Easter. The Sundays um, are also numbered after Pentecost. So it might be the third Sunday after Pentecost, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. The Vigil of the Ascension is a second class feast. Oh, by the way, all those Sundays after Pentecost are also second class feast. And the Sundays after Easter are second class feast as well. Getting out of order here. Um, the, um, also, I should mention that there is a Sunday after the Ascension in the TLM, and that is a second class feast as well before, before Pentecost. Um, the Transfiguration on August 6th is a second class feast, and in Novus Ordo on the same day, it is a feast day. Um, St. Lawrence is celebrated as a second class feast on August 10th, and he is celebrated as a feast day on um, August 10th in the Novus Ordo as a deacon of the church. Um, he receives a higher ranking than most saints. Most saints are obligatory memorials or third class feasts or non-obligatory obligatory memorials or fourth class feasts. So he gets a much higher ranking. The Vigil of the Assumption of Mary on, um, is a second class feast, although the Assumption Day is a first class feast. And this is interesting too. St. Joachim, father of Mary, gets a high ranking as well. He has a second class feast on August 16th. In the Novus Ordo, St. Joachim and Anne, the parents of Mary, have a memorial on July 29th. Not a feast day, but a memorial on July 29th. So that's different than the TLM. The Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary on September 8th is a second class feast, and the Exaltation of the Holy Cross on September 14th is a second class feast, and both those days in the Novus Ordo are feast days on those same days. And this is interesting. The day after on September 15th is the Seven Sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and, on, and that is a second class feast. But in the Novus Ordo, we celebrate Our Lady of Sorrows on September 15th, and it's a memorial. Same thing for Our Lady of the Rosary on October 7th. In the TLM, it is celebrated as a second class feast, but in the Novus Ordo, it's celebrated on that same day as a memorial. The Feasts of the Apostles are all second class feasts. And the Greater Ferias of Advent from December 17th through the 24th. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of order, actually. Please ignore that. The Greater Sundays of Advent are third class feasts. Um, no, I'm sorry, they are second class feasts. Uh, okay, here we go, sorry, I had that right. I was getting confused. This is my, um, umpteenth take of this class, so I'm not going to redo it, but let me correct that. The Greater Ferias of Advent, December 17th through the 24th, are second class feast. So just explain a little bit about that. Um, in the Novus Ordo, it's very similar. The final days of Advent from the 17th through the 24th have their own propers and their own readings. There is a fourth week of Advent, but for example, if the Tuesday of the fourth week of Advent fell on December 17th, instead of using the readings for Tuesday of the fourth week of Advent, the readings for December 17th would um, take precedence over that because of the recognition of these holy days right before 
the great solemnity of Christmas. So in effect, those days do have a higher ranking than other Advent weekdays or burial days. A nuptial mass is classified as a second class feast. However, it may not take place on a Sunday. Okay, wrapping it up here. This is, this is long, it's a little complicated, but it's fascinating. Okay, third class feast. Third class feasts are very similar to what we know as obligatory memorials or more important saints. Now, during the liturgical calendar, there are very few burial days that do not have a saint assigned to the day. So for that reason, most weekday masses are third class feasts. The ferias of Advent, the weekdays of Advent, with the exception of the final days before, in the week before Christmas, are all third-class feasts. The ferias of Lent are all third-class feasts. And the ferias of Passiontide, or the weekdays after Passion Sunday, before Palm Sunday, are all third-class feasts. A Requiem Mass that is celebrated on the 3rd, 7th, our 30th day after death is classified as a third class feast. And I have to say, in looking at the liturgical year of the TLM, there are a lot of saints, many, many, many more saints than we have in the Novus Ordo. A lot of saints that um, one does not hear of in the Novus Ordo. So there's um, many differences in the calendar as far as third class feasts go. Fourth class feasts are very similar to uh, obligatory, I'm sorry, non-obligatory memorials or optional memorials and um, or ferial days. So how this works is um, on a ferial day where a saint is not assigned specifically or, um, or a where the celebrant is obliged to recognize that saint or an obligatory memorial, um, the celebrant has the option to, to recognize the saint, um, the optional memorial for that particular day. Uh, so the ferias or weekdays in Christmas tide are all fourth class feasts. The ferias or weekdays in Paschal tide are all fourth class feasts. The ferias after a Sunday are fourth class feasts um, if they are not an obligatory memorial and they use the mass propers of the preceding Sunday. All Saturdays in the TLM are Saturdays of Our Lady and they are considered fourth class feasts. Um, in the Novus Ordo, the celebrant always has the option to celebrate the mass of the Blessed Virgin Mary the vote of mass of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, so that's very, very similar to the, to the Novus, or to the TLM as well. Um, so it's quite interesting. Uh, there are days as memorials that have different days than they do in the, um, in the Novus Ordo. Um, so there are differences back and forth with days during the year. Um, quite a bit of difference, I would say, with third and fourth class feasts compared to first class feasts. Um, so that's all I have to share for now. Uh, it's really interesting, the history and tradition of what we have in the Novus Ordo that we've, that's been given to us through the traditional Latin Mass, um, all part of our rich tradition. Um, so I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about where all this came from. Okay, thank you and God bless you.